hi, 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 hello, hello and welcome uh, to this episode of uh, live streams. Um, you got me on, uh, you got me on my guitar improvisation. Welcome, welcome to this uh, special episode of live streams. Uh, my name is, uh, as always, uh, Victor Gamov, and I'm developer of a kid here at Confluent. And today, as you see, we have uh, some special episodes, um, some special episodes uh, of uh, live streams. Welcome to uh, my 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 virtual studio, where we're going to be talking about maybe music, maybe uh, maybe streams. Um, my name is Victor Gamov, usually, but today you can call me Bruce. You can call me Bruce Spring Streams. And uh, today we're going to be talking about stream processing, obviously. But also, I have a, the t-shirt on another famous Bruce. Um, write down uh, what's which, which your um, either favorite song of Bruce Springsteen or favorite movie with Bruce Lee. Also, write down in the comments where we're coming from. So, um, I'm looking into some of the YouTube stats and I see we do have a pretty, pretty good, um, pretty good uh, turnaround today. Uh, we do have a substantial number of viewers and most of them, most of them, I feel that the first timers um, and uh, um, well, Let's uh, let's address some of the comments. We uh, we we love uh, comments from our uh, from our users. Um, it's called fun, my friend. It's not cringe. It's called fun, and uh, I think it's it's a good idea to have a little bit of fun in uh, in these times where everything is going uh, into you know dumpster uh, dumpster fire. So yeah, I you, you you might have your your opinion about this cringe, but. Uh, stay tuned for uh, more um, valuable content. All right, um, I see. Yes, the Warren uh, just uh, brought up some of his favorite uh, song from uh, Bruce Springsteen. Uh, we have some people from Arkansas. Hey, how's it going? Welcome. That's very nice. Uh, we do. <laughs> um, people from. Madurai, India. It's great, great to hear. Uh, Texas, welcome. Uh, our uh, some of our some of our regulars, Naveen, welcome, uh, welcome back to two live streams. Oh, Canada. Um, hey guys, how's it going? Hey, Dave. How's it going? Dave is coming here. Uh, Littleton, Colorado. Oh, I, I heard there was a snow there. Um, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Peru, Madrid, Toronto. Wow, wow, you guys coming all over the place. Okay, great, that's, uh, that's incredible. That's really, really, really cool. Um, and it's uh, really exciting to have everyone here in, um, in this um, a live stream show. As we promised uh, previously, it's not going to be just a simple live stream show. So what we're going to be do today is uh, we're going to be doing some of the uh, Halloween special. Why it's special? Because it's going to be longer than usual, but also you get to participate in some of the work. I prepared the workshop that I run a um, couple weeks ago at the spring one in um, it was also a virtual event. And uh, in this workshop, I was talking about uh, event-driven microservices. So, and we said, okay, so how we can um, accommodate um, like a uh, thousand people <laughs> and which platform can accommodate thousand people? And I was like, hey, like, let's do live streams. That's what we do. And in these live streams, I really want you to partic participate. I will be showing you something. I will be, um, we will be coding together and materials are ready. Um, but also, like, if you have to drop off, uh, you can also use those materials and, um, you know, do it on your own pace. So, um, now, the, um, let's, talk, let's talk about what we're going to be doing today. So, first of all, um, I have a link for you. So, this is uh, this is link of our workshop today, and this is on my screen right now. I'll try to post it, and uh, hopefully my uh, YouTube bots uh, will be able to pass it to um, uh, to the to the audience. Um, but essentially, if you go to this one, it's gonna be like let me make it really really big. 
So the people want to go, if people want to go there, they will see it there. So it's gamov.dev slash spooky workshop. And when you go there, you will actually end up in a GitHub. Um, some of you know, uh, we are having some, um, some all of the demos that I do on live streams, I'm putting this on the MCN repository. Everything is there, you can go there and find it there. Uh, but this one, it's uh, the folder called Van Driven uh, Workshop. And all these instructions that I have here, we're going to be doing this today. We're going to be doing this together. Um, apart from that, apart from the uh, doing uh, the, the workshop and stuff, um, I would like you I would like to remind her uh, that you also can bring any questions. So like if something is not working for this particular setup or something is working or not stop working so or you have some general questions about Kafka. We this is the place where ask this question. Um, if you join us for the first time, I'm doing this every week. I'm going live every week and talking about tech, and talking about Kafka, talking about uh, stream processing, all kind of like uh, the nice and juicy stuff. So do not um, uh, do not hesitate uh, to um, to join. I can paste this link, but here's the problem. I think uh, the YouTube is not allow me to answer to put this one. But um, let me try to like this. Um, if you do, and let's 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 bring in this on the screen once again. Um, this is what I would I'm talking about. Um, YouTube is smart. It still not allow me to uh, to pass paste this uh, link there. But uh, right now it's on the screen. It's uh, down below. Um, and we're gonna be doing like all sorts of stuff here. So let me know. I will put this side by side, and I put my head down somewhere here. Now. Yeah, I will ask someone to post the link into um, um, into YouTube chat for some reasons. My links are not. Uh... Cool. All right. So what we're going to be doing is let's take a look on some prerequisites and how we can uh, set up uh, our things. So let me make a bigger font and I will show you how I live streams. Awesome. So a couple things. We need to have an um, account on Confluent Cloud. That's some of you already have it because you join this live stream every week. Um, if you don't have it, it's also not a big deal. I will show you how we can create one. I will create my own uh, new account and show you how we can do um, all the things around. So next thing is that uh, we need to have a um, Cloud CLI installed. So Cloud CLI, in this document, there is a link how we can install it. Um, you can go there. And there's just like one liner that you can do. This is the one liner that you can execute and uh, you can download this um, um, C Cloud CLI. So next thing is that it's good if you have a Docker in, uh, in your computer, um, maybe like this. Um, and uh, if you have this, uh, you should have also Docker uh, Compose uh, version. Um, this is something that we're going to be using like for a while because there would be some of the local work that we need to execute, um, and uh, yeah, that's that should be that should be it. Next thing is that um, you need to have uh, Git, and you need to have uh, Java installed. So I recommend uh, that this workshop is designed to be used with uh, Java 11. Uh, there's not many things that uh, Java 11 specifically, but like, let's move this, uh, this thing <laughs> in the future. So that's how we can do this. So if you have it, everything, uh, it's good if you have an IDE, it's good if you have some sort of um, um, like editor that you can do the things, um, you can use it. But otherwise, it's just like, you can do this everything in console, like pretty much, except a few things maybe. We're gonna be doing this in browser. So um, you can get the whole code, like if you prefer, you can get whole repo. Um, let's do this one 
I just live streams. That's what uh, our folder where we were. Um, is Java 8 okay? Generally, yes, it's okay, but not in 2020 anymore. Um, you still can use Java 8 there. Um, there are some API calls that are only available in Java 11. Um, they're not super, um, the, what, what word I'm looking for? Um, they're not super, um, significant right uh, but i would suggest to use java 11. Uh, if you don't know how to install java 11 there's a very cool tool called um, sdk man and using sdk man you can easily install any possible version of um of java so we would like you could do sdk uh, install java uh, java 11 or something like that um, Update now. No, not doing this one. Or I'll do SDK, um, LS, Java. And I can install a specific version of the Java. Specifically, uh, like if I'm interested, right now I'm ins I installed the 11.0.7. So that's, that's version that I'll be using. So again, like if I'll just run this uh, Java uh, minus version, that's I'm going to be running. So that's uh, that's what we have here. Now the next thing is that so it's getting code of the workshop. So this is the hardest part, um, and uh, the way how it can be done in my live streams, I will just do git clone and um, ha, huh, that was wrong. It's actually incorrect. Um, that's gonna be a demo scene. I found my uh, error in uh, in my own uh, repository, so that's what happens um, usually. So I'm cloning this repository right now. It might take some some time because it's big. There's a lot of demos. Uh, if you're not interested in those demos, I do have some instruction how we can do this kind of so-called sparse uh, um, checkout that allows you only check out a specific folder, so you don't need to you know worry about other demos. But other demos are awesome. If you're interested in all things Kafka, look no further. So if you go in here and you will find in the README, there is extensive list of um, uh, of the demos that are available there from different talks from me and my colleagues. Uh, but today we're going to be doing this workshop thingy. Now, if I will go there, I go demo scenes and event-driven microservices workshop. Okay, now I am pretty much golden. If you are here at this point, you're still here, you're still here with me, and you're still doing some other stuff, um, that would be um, that would be incredible. That would be incredible. And let me see if we do have any comments here. Okay. Uh, okay, so Ahmed is asking, we need to know about using Kafka as a job task queue. That's great. You probably can do that, uh, but we're not going to cover uh, this particular topic um, in in this particular video. But if this video will hit, uh, I don't know, like uh, uh, 200 likes, just like sample simple, uh, 200 likes in one of the future episodes of live streams, um, uh, I will be. Um, I will make it make it happen. I will talk about how to use Kafka as a task queue. So remember, 200 likes. And I will talk about the task queue. So um, apart from this, I'm looking. There is there are not much of the questions. Um, let's see. Yeah, um, don't forget. You just join us. Uh, write down in the in the in the comments uh, in the comments section where we're coming from, and also the, uh, some of the our some of our. Um, uh, regulars, they know that we're also discussing what we're drinking. Uh, today I'm drinking tea with lemon. It's getting really um, chilly. Uh, so in this case, I'm drinking uh, tea today. What are you drinking? Write down in the comments. All right, cool. Um, yes, I'm speaking uh, Russian. I understand Russian, but today I'm speaking English. So for uh, those questions that we have in uh, in the comments. All right. So we we let me spend a little bit more time on some questions. Um, 
Um, so question is, can I paste uh, the git command? Uh, in On my screen, uh, I showed the link, or you can find the link a little bit upstairs, like the, uh, the link that uh, the Confluent account just posted. Uh, use this link, the, all these comments, all these commands that I will be doing, all these commands are will be there. So, um, and um, we will, let me actually do this right now. Um, so I will fix that. So since the people are, uh, we're doing this um, uh, remote teaching, demo scene. And uh, I'm, I'm good, I'm golden. So if I'll go and refresh, you will have a fresh version of this, uh, of this command. Again, if you are at the point where you see all these kind of things, uh, we are very close to here. How to, how to install. Let's see what kind of comments. How to install Confluence CLI? This is a very good question. Um, if you will go to this document with uh, all this instruction, there would be a prerequisite section. And the prerequisite section has a link to um, installing Confluence CLI that leads us to um, here. I will put this in, uh, in my window um, so you will see. That's uh, that's how you can install Confluence CLI. All right, cool. So um, once again, people, um, pay attention. Pay attention, and um, the um, do not forget what I was telling you. There is only one link that you need to use today. This is what link. This is link that we already have in our um, in our comments. This link leads you to um, to repository, and you can clone this repository and get everything there. All the commands that I will be showing you today will be in this document. All these links to installation additional tools will be in this document. So pay attention. That's gonna be that's gonna be there. All right. Cool stuff. All right. Just listen to my voice and uh, pay attention. <laughs> um, now, next thing. Let's uh, let's start with uh, some Confluent Cloud. Okay. So the um, for for this for this presentation for this uh, workshop, you're gonna be needing a Confluent Cloud account in. Um, if you will sign up for Confluent Cloud, you'll get 200 bucks like for your account. Specifically for today, I'm also giving you like I'm matching it. I'm getting more uh, money to your account so you can play around more with this uh, the Kafka thingy. So we're going into this uh, um, uh, creating this account and uh, my email. Let's call it uh, Victor. Plus, I'll just do live streams. Uh, you can put whatever account, uh, whatever email that you need, um, Victor Gamov. Again, confluent.cloud, this is where you need to go. Um, this is where you need to um, sign up. My organization is, is Confluent. And I will be using uh, uh, the tool called 1Password to generate my password so this you will not see. Um, you will not see what I'm doing. And I'll just do new um, password. Let's just do um, new password. And the password needs to be super uh, secret. Uh, generate password. Uh, my password is going to be this. I'm signing in. I have read. And um, yeah, why not? Submit. And I say Victor plus. Um, Cloud Victor plus live streams. 
So save login. Okay, so now I need to go and check, uh, uh, verify my email that uh, my account would be successfully created. Uh, you will not see this, but this is something that you can do this one. So if you already registered, uh, wait a second and I will show you how you can activate this coupon. Uh, I'm verifying my email, I'll just do verify. Okay, sweet. I'm going here, I'll just do um, login. Do login. And now this is what you will see here. So that's, um, that's gonna be here. I'm not gonna like take a tutorial if you first time here, um, do not um, do this. Like I'm not first time. If you first time, you can go through a tutorial. But like, um, bear with me for uh, walk through. That will be uh, we will be doing uh, this to today together. Now, um, getting back to our instructions. So, so what our instruction is saying that we need to go back into the scripts C Cloud. So in this case, I'm going into scripts C Cloud. And the next thing is that I need to do is to execute this command um, that's called cloud login and save. So um, we will, I will be using the same email that I just created. Um, in this case, it's gonna be for live streams. I'm gonna be using my password from the live streams as well. Now my cloud command will be set up to work with this uh, Kafka cluster. Now, the next thing is that let's try to run um, this. So this is automated script that will provision the Kafka cluster with configuration that I like. Um, you can do this manually, but I prefer to have it like in automatic fashion so I can focus on some other things while this thing will be provisioning. Okay. I could uh, run this one. And here, there's something important that you need to know. There's we running this right now in uh, in a real cloud environment and at some point uh, you might be get charged. Hey, that's money, right? Um, so make sure that once you're done, um, you're not, if you play around and uh, you see some of the um, like things what you like and, and, and stuff like that, um, you do not forget, shut it down if you don't use it. So you've been warned. Um, so yes, I still want to run this. Um, I still also want to create a key SQL DB. Um, it also will cost some money, but we have enough money in our coupon in order to um, um, in order to get this like the workshop and uh, learn some of the stuff that uh, we're going to be doing. Now, inside my Confluent Cloud, so what I will go here, if I'll go here, I will see there would be new environment created for me. So this environment uh, will be created. And let's see what, what, what we have in here. So some of the errors, let's see. Maybe, maybe I forgot to do something important. If I do Kafka, there's no clouds, so there's no clusters. If I need to create cluster, before I can create cluster, I need to go to this section about billing and payment. And this is where I need to enter my some of the some of the credit card details. For now, you have a, everyone have this like a free usage. Um, so right now I do have a 200 bucks and this I will be using this 200 bucks and uh, so far so on. But in order to me to um, continue to use this, there's a couple things I need to do. So first of all, I need to add my credit card and this something something that I will do uh, in the background because, you know, Russian hackers, credit cards and, and all this stuff, they don't uh, come along together. So I will do this one on the separate screen. Um, and after that, I will show you how you can get the, how you can get there. So that's, um,
um, go in here. Login. So bear with me uh, where I am entering my um, some some of the credit card information. Um, you will not be charged uh, for 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 this uh, workshop. This um, information will be there. Uh, let me do this one. So I will do this one. Uh, Twenty four. And okay. Awesome. So I have uh, some of the information about this. Uh, my credit card is here. Um, and this is where this is important. This is where you need to enter this promo code that I've given you. So uh, reminder, the promo code that we're going to be using is SPRINGSTREAM200. SPRINGSTREAM200. And I need to enter this over here. So I click Save. And now I do have a 200 more. Um, so in this case, before my credit card will be charged, you have 400 bucks to play around with uh, serverless Kafka. So um, if you don't like it for some reasons, if you don't like it or you don't want to use it, just like uh, stop uh, your all these clusters and remove your credit card and you're golden. If you like it, you know, you just continue to do this or like hit me up for some of the <laughs> um, extra promo codes. So unfortunately, the way how the billing system works right now, it doesn't work with credit card. We're working on this to provide kind of like a free tier. But so far, this is something that needs to be done in order to get this up and running. So now, so I should be able to rerun this script and um, without any problem. So since my credit card information is there and folks, I'm here with you on the same, you know, on the same level. I entered just my personal credit card there. So if I will be charged like I will be punished, <laughs> things like that. If you will be charged uh, for you know running this workshop, uh, let me know. You can find me in, uh, in in Twitter, DM me in Twitter, and we'll try to see how we can uh, figure out this um, with you. So, so far, so how are we looking? So while it will be running, I will be I will switch to um, some of the camera view and uh, read some comments. So folks, um, send me. Send me your um, send me your uh, questions here. All right. It shows extra two hundred bucks in my balance without credit card. That's correct. So once you sign up, you will get the free um, uh, coupon for two hundred bucks, and uh, you can use it. But you cannot start the cluster without entering credit card. From one point of view, it's uh, it's also protection against some of the, again, Russian hackers who can start like multiple Kafka clusters without entering credit card. Um, but also, it's uh, the way how this like billing system is designed and works. Um, like I mentioned before, we are working on improving this this one. What Confluent Cloud gives us? Well, that's good. You, this is a great question that you ask, uh, Vladislav. Um, Confluent Cloud. We're going to be using this Confluent Cloud for a couple things. We're going to be using today um, the Kafka. Um, we're going to be using just some basic cluster, but you can always move from the basic to uh, more standard that have uh, like better SLAs, or you can go even uh, to um, and deploy your kind of like dedicated cluster that have all these nice builds and whistles in terms of like uh, automatically expansion, automatic expansion, um, infinite uh, retention, infinite uh, storage, and all these kind of things. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I highly recommend you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check the videos from the project Metamorphosis. We actually went very deep in details explaining what the Confluent Cloud gives you and that other providers cannot give you. So I hope it makes sense. And I'm not going to spend much time uh, on, on this one because you know this is just one of the steps that I need to do. Um, why not run all this on-prem? So you definitely can run this on-prem. And I also include some of the local Docker um, um, 
um, Docker image um, that you can use uh, and play around locally. Um, but it looks like you're the first time on the show. In this show, I don't like to run stuff on my computer. I like to be cloud and I want to explore the cloud ways of um, of this uh, this technology. So um, this is not the case. This is not the. It's not about like why you cannot. It's it's the case like yeah, we're going in cloud. That's gonna be awesome. So. Um, Yeah, yes, Gabriel, thank you so much. Uh, the, I, thank you so much for the sensor. Yes, exactly, because it's called uh, Spring Boot and Confluent Cloud. I appreciate this response. Spring Reactive on Kafka. Um, I did some of the reactive uh, episodes uh, in um, in this live stream channel. If you go to the live streams uh, playlist uh, that is on also on Confluent channel, you will find all the episodes where we're talking about reactive uh, 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 Spring and, and Kafka as well. So, can I use the Kafka on GCP instead of Confluent Cloud? So, here's the interesting thing. Yeah, definitely you can, but it's going to be also provided by Confluent. So uh, when you go in and provisioning Kafka on GCP, uh, we will we will be there as a kind of like a partner who provisions the Kafka. If you have a um, cloud account, you definitely can use um, you definitely can use the, the Confluent Cloud of your cloud account. For example, if you have Amazon, you can go and have a corporate Amazon account. You can provision your Kafka cluster inside Amazon uh, by just like adding another element from the marketplace. Same thing with the Google Cloud, same thing with Azure. Um, if you have a corporate account, you can definitely provision Kafka cluster there. So that's what would be easy. Okay. Command not found. Um, that means that you didn't install C Cloud. You didn't install C Cloud, and uh, you need to go and install it. And uh, there was some of links in um, in this um, in this chat. You can find how you can install a Confluent Cloud. So you're gonna run Kafka cluster inside Cloud VM with your Spring Boot service application. So well, technically not exactly like this, but like if you try to oversimplify. Okay, so let me quote. Uh, um, let me quote some of the characters, and you you get to know who I am uh, quoting. Um, so when you say this, so you're gonna run Kafka cluster inside this cloud VM with your Spring Boot service application. It sounds like a little bit oversimplifications here. Um, and if you folks um, know from what the movie this quote was, um, I will personally give you another coupon uh, for Confluent Cloud. All right, cool. Let's see uh, if we have uh, some cluster pro uh, cluster created. Uh, some of the things that I configured that you might, might not work for you, so that's why let's uh, switch to um, to to my screen. All right. Let me uh, hide this one over here, so I will not uh, obstruct our ways. Um, there would be some of the things here. Um, some people mentioned here that uh, the uh, command that fails. In my, um, this is how the stuff should look like for you. So first thing that is, um, uh, I'm sorry. Um, the first thing that you will have here is that the Kafka cluster will be created and this is going to be our ID, this is going to be cluster ID and uh, this is environment ID. After that there would be some validation process and um, some, some other some other things. Now it's waiting for KSQL DB to be up. So if I go here, um, let me see, it's uh, some of the leftover that I, I didn't didn't go well. I'll just um, remove this one because I don't like these leftovers. Now I do have a one Kafka cluster that was created, but like check this out. It was using uh, GCP as a provider and it uses uh, US East as uh, my destination. And the reason for that is because like if I run GCP ping, um, I will um, it will show me which is the closer provider for me. So how you can change that? How you can fix that in 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 your in your environment? So if I will do, um, I will show you how we can um, modify this script. And this is where I need to open um, my favorite, uh, my favorite tool, my favorite IDE. It's um, IntelliJ. And run in background. And go out of screen, but we're still in presentation mode. Now, 
when I'm going to screen streams in the, the cloud, uh, scripts, cloud, and I'm going into um, stack create, you can find this uh, command uh, GCP. So on the very beginning of the script, I specify the cloud providers that um, I'm using. So in this particular case, uh, uh, cloud cluster, it will be used GCP. Uh, you can use AWS uh, also, um, and GCP is just a closer and uh, works more reliably for me uh, with uh, this type of setup. So if you have a problem sort of running this script, like you have a, you don't see clear output, you don't see some of the you know information about uh, this uh, these things. In this case, just like run this once once again. Like if you you know rerun this uh, rerun this command. So if you installed uh, if you installed C Cloud and it doesn't recognize in your command line, so in this case um, it needs to be in the path uh, variable. Another thing that okay, the people trying this on Windows um, for. Certain, some reasons that I don't I don't run Windows. Um, I run this on either Mac or or either Linux. Um, technically, there is no problems. You can you can just run this on Windows without any problems. But you need to know like you need to you, you cannot run the shell scripts in the standard uh, Windows prompt. You either need to use the Sigwin or something like that. I haven't touched the Windows for a while, but C Cloud works fine in um, in Windows. So. There should be no uh, there should be no issues of uh, using the C cloud here. Um, should be uh, should be no problem. Um, so once you install it, you need to put this in in a path. So what what do we have here? I do have uh, this uh, the Kafka cluster over here, um, and uh, I do have a KSQL DB cluster here. It's up and running, and there's a bunch of things that I I need to start to do. So at this point, if you have a cluster set up, um, you, Golden, you can continue to work with me on, uh, on the next step. So the first step was the hardest because, you know, it takes, it takes something. It takes a credit card. So this is why it was the hardest. So um, it, should be, it should be worse. Uh, it, should be, it should be good. Now, um, let's, see, um, let's see some questions. Yeah, um, I was running this script uh, that called a C Cloud Stack Generate. Um, I'm on the step zero. Like if you look here, I'm on the step zero. Provisioning Confluent Cloud Cluster. And step number two, that will run everything. So that will create everything and so far and so on. All right. Is there any facilities for tolerance in C Cloud? Yes, uh, there are plenty. So um, we will take care of uh, your Kafka clusters. Um, and there's different layers of uh, SLA available, um, starting from some dedicated, uh, starting from some of the basic cluster that runs in um, a multi tenant environment, uh, ended with some of the dedicated environments. So you have a plenty of um, uh, full tolerance there. Um, why C Cloud if Kafka are running on GCP? Why not using uh, G Cloud, which is uh, native? It's a good question, and I already explained this earlier. Um, if you will go again there in GCP and try to you know run the manage Kafka, you highly likely will be recommended to run Confluent Cloud. Um, we are um, the partner with uh, GCP, and our offerings there just like natively work there. Um, like your question in general, uh, maybe. Um, explained like like why to run any managed service right why to run any managed service and how it needs to be done so um uh, like if i can run this myself why to run this in cloud because i don't want to run this myself and i just want to run this in cloud and i will explain because i just don't want to you know mess around with kafka i just write want to write my microservices uh, okay script is not running 
So do you have a tier zero support for Confluent Cloud for all workloads, SLA things? Uh, so asking. I guess the question about uh, different SLA tiers available. Um, so if you go here and you create, say, like default, um, and you can create cluster. So there's uh, SLAs that are available for basic and standard. Uh, for uh, basic is 0 0.2, 0.5, and uh, oh, sorry, 99.5 and 99.95. Uh, there, there are also dedicated clusters uh, available on uh, on request. So if you need dedicated clusters, um, you will be um, you need to you know contact the support so we can provide this you with dedicated cluster. Now. Um, so next thing is that we're switching um, switching to next um, to next thing. Some people running and jumping in front of gun. Um, that's that's I like. That's uh, that's the spirit. Let's uh, let's take a look. Now, so once I provision this cluster, next thing is to have uh, some some data somewhere. So simple idea is that um, I would have um, uh, some database, some of the local database that I will show how you can use a connector to pull this data from this database into Kafka cluster. So this is why I have this uh, the script that will start a couple things for me. There's a script called start connect that essentially will run a couple things. It will execute. Um, um, it will execute Docker Compose, and my Docker Compose includes two two connectors. One connect, uh, one connectors, uh, two uh, containers. Uh, one container will include Kafka Connect, and another one will include um, a Postgres database. So my Postgres database will emulate situation when you need to kind of have a like a legacy or like traditional database, and this data need to end up in Kafka somehow. So when I run this, um, I also need to provide a, a configuration file. So one my script was executed. Uh, when I run this in my delta config, it, I generated all sorts of, um, oh, sorry, stack config. So this is um, this is something that we will be using. So that's why I like to execute this with a command line rather than executing this um, in a, in a, in the UI and after that copy pasting the scripts. So I was able to um, automatically create this configuration file that I will be using inside my applications, and I don't need to hard code this information anywhere. So in order to make it work, uh, there is a again script inside this. Um, um, if I go to um, scripts. C cloud in this folder I will be running um, start connect stack configs um, stack so configs and there should be Java service account. So in this case, it will uh, generate some of the files that it would be injected in my uh, in my connector. If I will uh, show you here um, Docker Compose. Uh, my Docker Compose will include some of the C, the, some of the um, environment variables that needs to be injected inside. So those will be provisioned, uh, those would be created, and will be injected by this script. Um, so this script would be responsible for doing that. Okay, let me run this, and I'll show you what happens, uh, what, what will happen after. Um, and I'll use uh, top. Uh, Ctop is a very nice tool that allows me to kind of like monitor um, connectors or connectors, containers. I monitor uh, containers the same way as I have a monitor process. So in this case, uh, you see I have a one, um, uh, one is a Kafka Connect uh, container, and another one, demo account database. So it's going to be using Postgres to um, to run this this application, and if you're using, let's see, SQL Studio, all right. So let's see if I have a connection to my local host. Connect uh, local host. Um, right now it's empty database. There's nothing here, but uh, I would like to populate uh, this uh, with some some data. So this is how we can do this. Um, so I do have a data generator app. We're going to be using this gener data generator app to um, to provision some of the fake data into into my application, or like rather not the fake, but rather some of the mock data, right? Um, 
and in this case I need to go in in um, in my so it looks like it's up and running so I don't need this and I can close this um, inside this workshop so first of all I need to do source um, this is how my scripts C cloud C cloud delta config environment delta so in this case if I'll do env my for example Kafka cluster bootstrap server will be available inside my application so my application will be able to use it so next we're going into this data generator world um, and at the point where I want to build it so let's build it so I'm running this data generator. If you didn't have a Gradle before, Gradle will download, and after that it will also download some other dependencies. Um, build was successful, so I can just like go ahead and copy paste this in here. And uh, this is my data generator app it will be up and running. So the way how it works, if you if you are familiar with some of the Spring Boot output, um, it will uh, create connection to my uh, Postgres database. Um, in, in here, it will uh, populate data with some of the uh, fake, uh, fake accounts. Let's see. Generated account number 1000, meaning that I generated 1000 accounts. And if I can back, uh, switch back to my um, uh, refresh and go to account store, I see the table called accounts. Um, and there's some data about account. It's just some, some fake data that I will be using. So let's take a look on the source code, how it actually was done. Um, how it was done, and uh, if I go to data generator, SRC, Java, there would be a couple things. Data uh, account. Um, I do have an implementation of my service so that will um, generate some of the fake account. I'm using this library called Java Faker that will uh, provide me with all sorts of uh, um, the, the generated data and stuff like that. Um, and, and, and things like that. So I'm just generating this one and after that I'm using Spring, the Spring Data um, to the, put this inside, um, inside my database. Um, now my data inside the database. So next thing is that how I can bring this data uh, from my local database or like on-prem database or like some database into my Kafka cluster. This is where we're going to be using our Kafka Connect. Um, this is where we're going to be using our Kafka Connect. And the next thing is that I need to deploy this connector. So with my a container, I start a worker. This worker will have uh, all things um, connected to uh, the Confluent Cloud uh, with uh, Kafka storage and things like that, but we actually not running any connectors now. So when I run the script, uh, deploy connector, I let's do this one. So my application is is running. Let's keep it this running, and that's uh, that's totally fine. Um, we'll do source just in case. So I'm running this one. So now, if I run this um, connector status, I should see that account GDBC source should be up and running. So the way how it works um, in my here, my uh, data generated populated data into account database. And after that, I'm using GDBC connector to push the data into Kafka. So essentially now I should be able to see this in my uh, topic accounts. And I go go here messages, and uh, let's see if I have any data here. It's uh, it's loading, loading. Let me reset, uh, offset. Oops. It's nice when something breaks in front of you. Um, let's do this one. I will do a reset, offset. Mm, can be no options. It's. Uh, um, let's do this one, this one. So my data now, my accounts data from my top, from my table, from my Postgres table now landed in, in Confluent Cloud. All right. I will take a, a, a short break here. I will check the, the comments and see what the people are, um, 
are doing here and uh, if, uh, if, 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 as, if there's anything I can help with. All right, uh, let's do this one. Let's see. So, uh, to, 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 to. are there any significant latency issues um, when running Confluent Cloud compared to managing your own cluster? Uh, that's that's a very good question. That's a very good question, Gabriel. Um, and uh, my my usual answer here is it depends, right? It depends what kind of hardware you're running. It depends what kind of configuration of um, of the um, um, of your cluster is running, like how close your application to Confluent Cloud. So right now, this is why my cluster is deployed closer to me, um, is because like uh, this cluster is deployed on the East Coast, and I'm also on the East Coast, and I do have a pretty good internet. But also at the same time, I'm streaming this uh, almost uh, like slightly more than Full HD. It's a 1440p uh, stream. So. I cannot tell about latency at this point, but like once your application will be close to your um, um, to your uh, cluster, um, this is something that you need to measure and see what is significant latency for for your application. In general, we do have a multiple customers who run like production grade workloads right now in Confluent Cloud, and uh, without you know complaining about latencies and things like that. So, hopefully, this helps. All right. Uh, so if we have a GCP corporate account, if we just give uh, you IAM role we've set up that you're required to run Manage Kafka, would it be fine? So you go into, if you have a GCP Corp account, you go into Marketplace, and inside the Marketplace, you need to select um, the Confluent Cloud. And in this case, it will appear in your one of the workloads in your Confluent, in your GCP Cloud. So this is how this will work. Uh, we don't need, like, there's there's some ways how we can um, provide you with the, like a private networking, so we can connect um, your your private uh, private cloud network with uh, with our cl clouds there with our clusters, uh, but it's slightly different uh, topic that we're not gonna touch today. How we can how we ensure that the data runs through the Kafka is secure? Do we need to encrypt all the data flows through the Kafka topic? This is very good question, my friend. This is very good question, and I highly recommend to um, on the YouTube channel on the YouTube slash Confluent. There is a video from the recent Project Metamorphosis where we would uh, episode episode because Project Metamorphosis is kind of like a weekly weekly thing that we deliver. There is a uh, detailed video about security, what kind of tools available there for security. Um, you can check it there. I'm not gonna um, go very deep there, so hopefully you will uh, figure out this. Uh, which uh, which is the cheapest cloud region to run Confluent Cloud uh, cluster? Sergey is asking. So um, answer is pretty much every because you're not paying to cloud providers, you're paying to Confluent directly, and the price would be the same between. It's just really up to where you want to deploy it. So it really doesn't matter about price. It's about um, you know you can choose your cloud provider if you like. Um, so all most of the contributors of Kafka are from Confluence. So if there's a bug in Kafka, MSK will be dependent on then the bug. Um, I'm not sure if it's a question or or something. Um, there's a community process. You can go there, the file Jira, and uh, like if there's a bug. Um, and uh, if there's some of the people who are available to fix this bug, they will work on this. Uh, but also, it's open source. You can f file uh, and fix the bug yourself. Um, why does environment name on the cloud and the uh, Confluent account on the website are different? So they're they're not. So the environment that uh, we're using in the website usually it has a, like a human readable name. But uh, when we're using this from CLI, this environment is is basically ID some 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 ID that uh, um, some other scripts can use uh, to to run this. Um, um, Darmesh, you need to check this. Uh, um, you need to check what kind of region you talking uh, about. Like, if it's um, uh, we do support multiple different regions, just like try, try around. If not, just email us. Um, uh, like, what kind of region uh, you require to support, and we probably will spin up the environment there without any you know problems. So, short answer is yes. 
why I am using Kafka Connect locally instead of Confluent Cloud? This is a very good question, Sergey, and thank you so much for throwing this, this bone at me. Um, I, did, <laughs> I, didn't, uh, I didn't ask for this, but I really appreciate this. So let's talk about this. Um, it's, uh, it's, I uh, like this uh, question very much. So um, if we go in here, if we go in into my... I can have a connector and I can see if I can do something like Postgres. Postgres CDC, Postgres since In this particular case, I'm interested only uh, GDBC, GDBC, let me see if I, uh, GDBC. Um, there's no GDBC. Um, so it's there. Um, like there's a, I need to have a um, source connector to connect to Postgres. But in this case, I need to bring the Postgres somehow. I need to bring a uh, database uh, in some other cloud providers that will require some additional moving parts. So I decide to, okay, so these things that uh, will not like essential for this, for, for, for this purpose, I can run uh, this myself. Also, it's a great example showing you there's some managed connectors, but you also can use like whatever connector you want if it's not available as a managed connector, but but in this connector also will be connected to this uh, Confluent uh, cl uh, Kafka cluster. Anyway, so let me show you uh, where's the topics. So for example, my connect right now uses this, um, my connect that runs locally uses uh, uh, this cluster to store configuration offsets and all the all possible uh, statuses. So it would be here. Um, probably in order this to make like a fully cloud native demo, um, I can uh, I can run this in in the cloud. However, there is one. There is one, and this is very good. So if you go to this one, um, there is a project on GitHub called Examples. And if you go into the folder called C Cloud Connectors, uh, no, sorry, uh, there should be um, there should be a very good cloud ETL. Yes, cloud ETL. This is fully um, cloud-based uh, demo that doesn't require you to run anything on your computer. It's uh, it uses connectors from different clouds and bring data in. That uses KSQL DB in the Confluent Cloud, and after that uses connector to push this data to to another one. So I highly recommend to check this out. Um, the the links of this if you're watching this in recording links should be somewhere down below you can find a link to um to this question and um this is where you're going to be running this okay so what are we talking about now um now the um going back to some questions Uh, what capabilities UI console provide? Anything that shows topic def against the timeline? I'm not sure I understand this question. Anything that shows topic def against timeline? Um, I, I'm not sure I understand the question correctly. So if you can clarify, that would be great. Well, um, Jose, this is not entirely true. So the you can configure things because connect is not the part of uh, uh, confluent and uh, connector we do develop some of the connectors but kafka connect is a part of apache kafka um, so we not we offer um, we offer managed connectors this there's a selective uh, selected number of connectors um, and i just didn't want to run this in uh, in the cloud just simply because it's going to be another like we're not running database. Uh, we do have a connector that will generate some some fake data, but uh, it would be not fun to use this fake data um, in in order to do this one. All right. So um, switching back to uh, switching back to my uh, to my screen. Now. We do have a we have some data in the cloud uh, again from the connector data comes into play now let's talk about processing how we can process this this data um, 
And also you can see uh, there's in inside instruction, you can find the ways how you can um, see what kind of data you have in these topics. For example, if I do account, um, messages, um, Switching here. All right, so if I, um, there's some cool thing that I can switch with this um, um, the view. There's a um, so-called card view, so I can see closely what's inside this message. Um, I do have a message payload, some header informations, keys, so all these uh, nice things. I know partition, offset, so that's, that's pretty cool. So my data is there, so let's do some processing with this data. Now, next thing is that we're switching gears to Kafka Streams. So Kafka Streams is a library that can be used with any Java framework. Again, it's a Java library. Um, and also you can use any JVM language. There's a Scala version, um, there's a Kotlin version. Um, I actually had this demo in the Kotlin as well, so uh, it uh, should be there. Uh, somewhere like, um, like hit me up if you're interested in Kotlin example I can send you this now so with this example the way how it works I have some account information and I will be submitting some of the like a real-time transactions and based on these transactions I need to make sure that um, like if it's a withdraw request if I want to withdraw some money from my account I want to make sure that I have enough money so in this case these operations need to have a uh, need to need happen uh, like atomically there would be no um, the chance that like some of these uh, operations will happen um, in um, like out of order or things like that. So this is why uh, the Kafka feeds very well because some of you might know that Kafka provides some of the ordering within uh, within partition. And if we will be using the, our account ID as our partitioning information, um, our all these requests, transaction requests for a particular account would be ordered, and so we don't need to worry about this. The next thing that how we can process this, um, how we can process these messages, and uh, the by design uh, the Kafka streams comes into play in the way how the Kafka streams per performs um, uh, computation and the performs the calculation. Um, it also handles situation where it, it, it processes one message at a time and will not move forward when it is when it is um, not processed. So this cycle essentially will be kind of like an atomic uh, operation. So we will, um, if uh, we receive new new request, we will uh, do computation. We will compute and check our account statuses and things like that. And uh, the way how it's done, we're going to be using this um, special type of um, of the class uh, called transformer that allows to to do some some additional transformation that has state. Our, our information about our account will be stored locally in a database called the RocksDB. Now, let's take a look on this application. So first of all, um, we're going into this Kafka Streams demo, and there's a couple things here. So we need to, you and me, we will be implementing this together. I will be typing this uh, here if you would like um, to do so, and I feel... So um, my application. So first of all, let's start with the transformer. So this transformer will handle situation when I need to um, do something with my uh, with my um, accounts. So there's some methods that are available that allows me to uh, to implement this. But before I implement this, let me show you another thing. How you would know that this thing is actually working. So there is a test. Um, and this test doesn't require any Kafka anything. It, it uses this component that part of Kafka Streams called topology test driver. And with topology test driver, you don't need to run anything. It's going to be running on your like local computer inside your JVM. And let me let me show you what we're trying to test. So I have a, this transaction that will um, have uh, account one with $100 USA, and um, once we like tr 
transform. It's just like uh, the method that uh, this transformer has. Once we execute this, this transaction should be successful, meaning that if we try to deposit 100 bucks to account number one, there should be success. Um, if we're trying to deposit or like withdraw uh, 100 rubles uh, from account one that might not have this, so we will have this error on sufficient funds. And another thing is that we will uh, we will deposit the rubles, we deposit the rubles here, and after that we should do um, a withdraw. So we, we are depositing 300 and withdrawing 200, we should be able to successfully execute this one. So this is three scenarios that my application should handle, like should handle fairly easily. And if I run this transformation transformer test, um, so currently, um, let's see. So it failed. It failed because uh, method transformer transform test and it's not successful. And the reason for that is because method transform is not implemented. So we can go like go in the live coding style and implement this one together. However, like you can go and just copy paste it from here. So you would know some of the logic that already uh, predefined here. Um, put it here. So let's see how this method will work. If transaction is deposit, we need to, we're creating new transaction result. And the transaction result will include information about transaction. It will include information about um, success. And after that, it will perform deposit of these, um, uh, of these funds. Um, let me click live. So in this case, um, this is going to be the part where we're executing successful transaction. Let's see. Um, I will do. I'll, let's do step by step. Like we will see. Um, um, what is the returns? Returns. A return like this. I'm switching to test. Run this. We will do this kind of stuff. Okay, so the first one actually worked because uh, we just need to deposit something. Now the first the first step is 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 working. So let's see um, what is going on with the next one. And uh, in this case, if it uh, transaction has enough found, we can generate a, a successful transaction, and we successfully withdraw. And the way how it works, there's withdraw, there's update funds method that will be, you know, changing this account. And uh, if there's not enough funds here, we're just throwing this insufficient found error. So um, if I run this test once again, that should work without any problems. So it works fine. So we do have a um, the transformer method, we implemented this one correctly. Next thing is that let's take a look on uh, what we need to do with our application, how we need to process this. And uh, here we're going into the world of Kafka Streams, and Kafka Streams is the system that designed around the concept of direct acyclic graph that you're using to describe a, how the message would be transformed. Uh, also know this like a direct acyclic graph, also known as a topology. So, um, so a couple of things that uh, I need to be doing here. So with this um, Streams Builder is our entry point or to this to build this topology um, we can build a stream from the kafka topic we can build a table from kafka topic and and uh, all other cool things as a matter of fact like if you have more time you can um, spend this time reading this um, and i did uh, all my best try to explain this these things here um, so in this case i'm going here and uh, my uh, uh, application that will receive the messages from our data generator uh, post, post this data in transaction request topic. Inside transaction request topic, we'll have all sorts of transactions. Withdraw, deposit, and pretty much it. Like, <laughs> with, for, like transactions for different uh, currency, transactions for different, um, you know, the, 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 the amounts and things like that. So I do this. 
Next thing, I want to transform. So I'm got, I got this, um, um, I got this requests of transactions. Now I'm passing this into transaction transformer. As a result of this transform method, I will get a, another stream called result stream that will have a result of transactions, right? Once it's there, I have ability to do this kind of like a, a fork, right? I can say, okay, if my result stream based on transaction result um, success property, based on this property, we forwarding this to transaction success topic or failed transaction topic. That's our application. Transaction in, we do processing. If result successful, we're writing into topic of a transaction successful. If um, result failed, we're sending this to failed. Um, um, so yeah, that's uh, that's how it goes. Uh, let's let's copy paste the full method uh, defend. That will say. Um, and uh, that's it. So this is our method that we need to implement. And another thing is a cool thing about this. I can also run a test that can explain a full cycle what I need to implement here. So uh, where is my successful transaction? So topology test driver generates a kind of like a mocked version of my Kafka Streams application. I submitting some of the transaction here. So I'm submitting um, deposit. I'm submitting a withdraw. And a result of this one, balance should be zero. Because you know when you have a deposit, um, um, 100 rubles, you getting 100 rubles back. Um, that's how this should work. Same thing that I'm testing the variance where I have a deposit $100 and withdraw $200. And as a result, I should have insufficient funds and uh, my data will need to land into, where is it, a successful result topic and there should be failed result topic. So this is how I can test all these scenarios without running in the Kafka. So I run this. So in this case, that's um, that's how it goes. So my my tests are passing. So let's run this application and see if these transactions actually work in here. So um, next thing is that I am running um, Gradle, building this app. It also will execute some of the tests along the way, so it's so good. Uh, I'll do just want to make sure that my connection will not break, um, and I'll do Java minus jar, and in this case, it's going to be guys streams application. Okay, so I'm watching my application connecting to um, a Confluent Cloud and um, should be up and running. Let me open a new window to show you something. Um, live streams. So if I'll go to um, demo scene and I'll do event driven microservice. Um, and just do scripts here. Okay, so a couple things. Let's see, uh, let me put this uh, side by side so you would see it actually works. So in my, in my topics, the, my application was creating this uh, successful topic, successful transaction topic. Now it would be running and I will be executing some some of the transactions and the way how I can do this I also put this in document so you can go and uh, do it yourself um, just copy some of the some of the generated transactions I'm putting it here executing and inside my uh, Confluent Cloud I should start seeing some of the successful transactions in a, in a second 
So some of the successful transactions that happened here, uh, let me switch to this uh, the card view. So in this case, um, there is a transaction a withdraw um, from uh, Canada dollars and account number two now balances 150. And the cool thing about this, uh, we can also go and check all this uh, for, for account number two, we see what the previous operations were. So in this case, account number two, we had deposit 100 Canadian dollars. Uh, 50 Canadian dollars and 300 Canadian dollars. So we should be able to see all this. So in this case, uh, we should be see order how this transaction is executed. So this is um, how we uh, deposit 100 Canadian dollars. This is how we deposit another 50 and our balance changed. And uh, we deposit another 300 and then our balance also changed. So in this case, we have order of this operation and how they will be laid out here together. So that's pretty cool. So um, now, it's, uh, it's pretty good. We're doing this fine. And uh, um, that's a part of the Kafka stream. So Kafka streams, very powerful uh, tool that allows you not only to um, uh, do some processing, but also you can test this. Um, and you can implement whatever logic uh, you want to implement. Um, and uh, also information about accounts can be like this information about funds can be exposed through the you know some rest service or whatnot so that is uh, pretty cool so let me um, take a quick break and i will um will see some of your i will see some of your co questions and also i will drink something that is um to boost up some of the energy so today we're drinking some organic pre-workouts uh with dragon fruit Cheers, folks. Um, hope um, you also have enough energy because we still have a one more. We still have one more um, section to cover. All right, let's see. Let's see if we have uh, any interesting questions. Not um, people complaining. So. Um, I want to begin with Kafka. What language is better to use, Java or Python? Well, which language uh, you get paid for? So if you're writing apps on Python, just like why you need to switch to Java um, and vice versa. I'm a Java developer and the Kafka is developed uh, in, uh, in Java and Scala and the JVM application. So for me, it was natural to use um, Java for this type of stuff. If um, if you are not a Java developer, maybe you know some of the things that uh, um, you would find um, you know slightly <laughs> confusing. However, however, there is no uh, reason not to use. Like, you can use any language pretty much. So let me um, let me show you quickly. One thing is um, here. Let me do this one. Uh, we're switching to. Um, where is it? Yeah. Again, if we're getting back to this repository of examples, if we go in here inside the examples repository, so what you will see here, there's a client section. And uh, so far, there are the list of officially supported examples that are using multiple different languages. So in this particular case, you can do Java, you can do Python, you can do Go, you can do Scala, you can do, um, you know, whatever you want. Um, even uh, Rust. Do we have any Rust developers in the, in the, in the, in the crowd? Anyone is using... Uh, Anyone is using the uh, Rust for something? All right, let's see what's going to be next. Um, um, okay, so to do to do to do. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. So, um, question about Spring. That's it's good that um, we do have uh, people who um, uh, haven't used it before. Um, so essentially, Spring gives 
some of the opinionated libraries, some opinionated ways how to use different systems, not only Kafka. I like Spring because it alleviates some of the end, like reduces some of the complexities of some apps. Um, I don't need to, like for my every new application, I don't need to write my own uh, like configuration framework. Spring provides me that. Like if I need to run the application in multiple environments and change these properties files using environment variables, I don't need to implement this like over and over again. The Spring has it out of the box. <clears throat> If I need to build the, the 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 web service, like I just need to put put one annotation. So um, when I was a consultant, I was getting paid for for results, not for lines of code I wrote. Um, I can write any possible framework. I can like any complexity of the framework if I will get paid for it. Always think about this, folks. Like uh, like what you're trying to do. If you're trying to solve problems or you're trying to you know do you know, learn, I don't know, how to write frameworks. Again, if you get paid for writing frameworks, it's awesome job, stick to it, write your own frameworks. Um, so that's why I like to show the people better ways doing things. That's why the Spring, the Spring, uh, Kafka, the Spring Kafka integration, it's very light wrapper on top of the Java clients. Um, there is a Spring Cloud Stream, which is uh, more opinionated ways, but it also puts some of the abstraction uh, layers on top. You kind of abstracting from the ways how, like, what's a Kafka producer, what's a Kafka consumer. Like, if with the recent version, they have uh, like a functional approach. You just write a function that generates some data, and that's it. You don't need to worry about like a producer dot send to topic and things like that. The rest of the stuff would be configured with configuration. So that's it. Um, and in in this. Um, in my application, let me switch back to uh, here. That's um, is, if you can see, and the, the, some of the people I see the complain about like simplicity. Yes, that's the whole purpose to show you some of the things that can be easily implemented uh, within this um, within this workshop. Um, there's a you know connect. There's a database. Uh, there's a Kafka cluster. There is a two microservices. One microservice will handle. So for example, this one, um, data generator, my my data generator. It has a very simple way how I can um, how I can submit a transaction controller. So this is how I can read the data from the REST interface, like uh, simple mapping. And there's a method that will be published this transaction into um, into Kafka topic. Spring, Spring Kafka also provides a wrapper on top of the producer and consumer that allows you to um, um, the, the thing called Spring Kafka template. Again, when I just injected it here, it's already inherited my configuration. Let me show you. With application.properties, um, some of this stuff from the cloud will be injected. It will read this information from environment variables. It's a super simple, I just need to focus on doing stuff rather than just like doing plumbing. So I love this very, very much. What's the opinion about Spring, like that, uh, Spring Data Flow? Um, um, I don't have uh, opinion about Spring Data Flow because I didn't use this intensively. I know that uh, there is a kind of we wrote the blog post like there was a blog post on Confluent uh, website for a while. Um, probably I need to look on this one more closely into this um, Spring uh, Spring Cloud uh, Spring Data Flow. Um, I don't know what what's exactly uh, what, what's there. Uh, Okay, so da, 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 looking for some of the good questions to answer, and I feel that um, I like I like how the people just get in there and start chatting among themselves. This is amazing. Uh, this is super cool, and thanks again, thanks everyone to join us today. Uh, it is it is super cool that uh, we do have uh, many um, awesome people here, and like hope you make some some friends here. Always remember, be kind to um, to one another. That would that's that's important. Now, um, um, chuk, chuk, chuk. inside. Um, so next thing, we are going into the next and uh, the last step of this thing. So now. Um, Apart from the running these microservices in uh, in a different environments, like say, like you can run the Kafka Streams application um, on the laptop, but like also you need to think about how you can run these applications 
uh, in production. Right. You need to think about this, how you can take this jar, put this into Docker container, um, and after that push it into um, push it into somewhere. And with this, um, you're thinking, yeah, like I need to take care of multiple things, but I still need to do like some stream processing thing, right? Uh, you want to do some stream processing and uh, the serverless may be maybe an answer and uh, right now i want to touch a little bit on the serverless um, stream processing with the managed ksql db ksql db it is a um uh, it's a stream processing database how about that uh, it has multiple cool things today we're going to be using uh the ksql db in the conjunction with this um our application. So remember, our application has a data generator component that submits transactions. Um, we do have some of the reference data already in the topic, account data. So inside this, um, come on, seriously, you just uh, log me out. If I go here and uh, we'll take a look on um, inside this topic um let's uh, reset offset and i will just want to pick up one of one of the account informations um partition say some of the account data we do have here let's take a look so we do have a data about accounts and also we do have data inside transactions say for example we do have a successful transactions and on successful transactions um, come on um, zero okay let's see some of the successful transactions uh, i'm not showing you my screen okay yeah um, go in here, I'll just do zero. Do we have a, anything here? Um, uh, maybe two. Partition number two. Um, partition number three. I don't remember in which partition I do have data because we have only two transactions um, for uh, account one and account two. I didn't I didn't catch which um, which partition uh, it was posted, so I don't remember. Um, partition number five. I'm, that's that's how it goes. Like I'm going into <laughs> all. Uh, Come on, where is it? Successful. Okay, we will do this another way. We'll use um, <clears throat> uh, reset offset uh, uh, functionality. Now, so idea is to enrich information that we have in um, in uh, transaction information. We will enrich it with the data that comes from. Uh, from some particular table. Now, in with this one, so first of all, we need to materialize our topic information into KSQL table, so we can implement some some things around. Um, so we'll do um, go in here. This is my KSQL DB, and I'm pasting it here. So what I need to do, I will be using this account topic. I know that the data is in JSON format, and I want to make this uh, as a table that I will be able to join stream with. So when I run this query, and this is important, I want to do this from error list, meaning that some of the data that was in Kafka topic will be available to be materialized with this one. So, okay, I'm getting some authorization exception, and but I anticipated this. And inside here, I do have a command that you need to execute in order to um, perform this stuff. So we go in here, or like let's just do this one. That essentially will configure ACL, so the KSQL DB cluster will be able to create topics inside my um, inside my Kafka cluster. So um, 
when I do run this query, I'm going to check on my earliest. I'm going to run query. Now, I should be able to do things like account. I'll do query table and I do earliest. And now my account information will be available for me. Uh, let's just stop run query. Why it's not? Why it is not? For earliest, it should be there. We should see it here. Um, my browser parses this data, um, data coming from uh, from the remote server. It's still there, waiting for a few seconds. This information will appear. Hopefully, I feel. Come on, that should be there. <laughs> there? No? 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 Let's see if my join actually will work. I hope um, um, something will uh, will work. So next thing is that uh, we're creating the stream transaction success, but essentially we are using the topic information from transaction success topic. And uh, based on this, we will create a stream. So every time, well, we write the sum of the transactional data. Oh, here we go. Uh, apparently, that took me some time to bring this data out. So now, uh, as you can see here, it is not uh, topic information, uh, not information about individual message, but this is a more you know, structured data that comes from this. And we can do things like... Um, um, you know, the, the getting by, where is it, where is it, account information, yeah, number, like based on number or, or, or number, we'll get this information and inject into our um, information about successful streams. So let's get back to this editor. I will do this. Transaction success is going to be another, it's going to be stream. That will include data from transaction uh, success topic. And also, you see here, we can parse this JSON, but uh, to kind of, um, the, the, like getting some structure inside the nested uh, JSON object. So we do this uh, earliest transaction success. So now um, if I would do this, let's see if I have any data here. Query stream, uh, the successful transaction. Um, let's take a look on this one, what we have here. Um, it's uh, information about transaction. And also, as you can see, all these transactions will already process this. This is something that Kafka gives you. You can always uh, use Kafka as an event store. Some of the, I, I've seen some of the conversation that um, <clears throat> uh, after um, um, creating this uh, thing. So the question, I just, I just saw the question I need to answer. Why I created ACLs after trying to create a table? So, in order to um, access to this table from uh, KSQL, I need to get uh, a KSQL server runs outside of Kafka topic, and there's no um, there's no knowledge how they you know connect it or whatnot. So, in order to get access to this particular table uh, from um, um, from my KSQL server, I need to allow uh, read permission for KSQL server uh, in order to read and uh, for for these topics. I hope it makes sense now. Um, and uh, so that's why I need to enable the communication between my KSQL DB and, um, and my Kafka topic. So transactional success, earliest run query. Once again, all these transactions that happened, they are ordered by um, the, the way how they happened, right? So we do have all this information, say transaction number two, um, withdraw, before that it was deposit, before that it was, um, remember, there was a deposit uh, 100, and after that there was a deposit uh, 150, uh, uh, deposit 50 and uh, balance 150, and now uh, 300 deposit, and after that we do withdraw 300. So um, all these transactions are in the same order and uh, now we should be able to do join. So essentially for the number, for, for number of uh, account, we need to get some extended information, information about account number. So the way how it's done, the way how it's done in my here, I'm creating this another stream. So when I have a stream of some events, I want to enrich this from the data from the table, I will create another stream. So in this case, I do this one.
So what it, how it will work, um, I'm joining account based on transaction success number and account number. So in this case, like when I run this, let me stop this and I run this query. Stream was successfully created. And the next thing is that when I do transactional statement, I do this query stream. So it runs it with the earliest information. Now, let's take a look. So latest uh, operation that happens on account, um, account number two, that we remember there was withdraw, we withdraw 300, and now we have some additional information about account. For example, we need to, we know about uh, account um, uh, owner, like based on account number, we also retrieve the account owner, uh, the owner number. So now if I will execute, say, uh, let's let's take a look at one of these um, um, one of these examples that I have with this uh, say deposit um, three hundred Canadian dollars, right? Um, and inside here, it's uh, you see it says emit changes, meaning that the changes keep coming. Um, let's let's do this. Uh, changes will keep coming, and if I will execute this. I should see this transaction appear here in just a second. So this is what happened, a new transaction just happened. And let's take a look what happened here. So we just have a deposit 300, uh, uh, 300 Canadian dollars, and we do have this enriched transaction that would be placed here. And the cool thing is this, um, this topic, uh, transaction six, uh, where is it? Uh, statement, statement, statement. So transaction statement topic will be also available as a consumption as a regular topic. So in this case, um, this messages also will be placed here. So whenever I will be doing this, all this data will be uh, will be writing here. So let's take a look on uh, one thing. So how much um, how much money we spent today? Um, billing payment. So what's my environment? Uh, this environment, so far there's nothing here. I don't see I was uh, charged much on this one. Probably it will update um, after a certain time. But so far, um, so far, so good. Let me uh, switch back, take a little quick um, shortcut and see if we have uh, any other questions here. Um, Well, I like this um, when the people saying uh, the key SQL DB is just a wrapper on top of um, um, it's a wrapper on top of a Kafka stream. That's uh, uh, again, no one, uh, no one pick up this reference. I feel it sounds like oversimplification. Um, and now, it's not. It's not just only. Um, it's not just only wrapper around uh, the Kafka streams. There's multiple things that you can do with just like writing your Java application. But uh, KSQL DB also includes ability to connect some external sources. I didn't use it today, but uh, you can run the connector within KSQL DB. So essentially, you can create a connector as a SQL statement, connect it to some external system, uh, bring this stream in. After that, you can do some like a joins, you can do some tables, views, and things like that. And after that, you can create another connector that to take this data out of uh, KSQL DB. So in this case, um, it allows you not only um, operate with data that comes from Kafka, but also data that comes from many other different systems. Another thing is that um, a KSQL DB uh, handles uh, multiple things uh, much easier, uh, like if you want to uh, change um, the types of messages, like I'm using the JSON here, but like if you want to do this with the protobuf or JSON or some other things, that um, KC, like transform, transforming this one string to another in KSQL DB is extremely easy. It's much easier to do um, with um, KSQL DB. So uh, there's like lots of things where Kafka streams are better and the KSQL DB are better. Like it's again, 
always think about what you're trying to pro problem you're trying to solve. Um, so, and KSQL DB is open source. Like KSQLDB.io, you can grab this and you can use this with even with the Apache Kafka, just like Apache uh, Kafka .apache org. So it's no, no problem here. Um, so when to use uh, KSQL DB uh, versus Kafka streams? This is very good questions. Um, if every time I will get the, just uh, like a 10 cents, like a penny, every time when I was asked uh, this question, I would probably will, you know, pay for my own Kafka clusters. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks so much, someone from, um, uh, someone from the Confluent just uh, posted the link there. Uh, there's a very good uh, the article that explains what's the difference. Now, who what's consuming output of KSQL DB? Um, also, very good question. So let's uh, let's take a quick look to this one. Uh, the way how it works right now, when I have a KSQL DB and I'm going into my say stream, let's take a look at transactional statement. Um, Transaction statement uh, results would be output to the topic that's called this like a blah, 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 transaction statement. This topic can be consumed any, let me show you uh, topics. Uh, this topic and I can go and see the messages here. Um, let's see if I will be able to do this from the very beginning. Um, let's submit something there. Let's do, um, say, deposit 500. So we would know that this actually works. So I just write this data as a raw topic and we can also see what's, what kind of data land in this topic. Um, this data, this thing that you see on the screen right now, actually went through the set of transformations. So my service received this REST and query, that REST, REST call from my local script. My Kafka Streams application does transformation to check this. Okay, so what is going on there? Um, the like what what is going on this what 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 what's happening um, created successful transaction this successful transaction was consumed by ksql and created this enriched the transaction uh, the transaction mm, transaction statement um, and put this in this topic so now i can consume this as just a regular kafka message or i can consume it with any uh, like th this this um, this topic can be consumed by say another connector and uh, dump this data into um, I don't know, like the serverless. You will have a serverless function that will create like a PDF that will send to your customer, something like that. And based on this, uh, we do have a connector that can do that. Like you can have a connector that will send this to Amazon Lambda and you execute Amazon Lambda afterwards. So that's um, that's how it goes, okay? All right, um, do... Um do, do, do I have example of uh, KSQL query example with Java code? Yes, if you go to this uh, youtube.com slash confluent and find a playlist about live streams, I did extensive like a three episode series where I was talking about how I can use Java um, client um, and this Java client is a reactive Java client. I showed example how you can use this with uh, project reactor Java client, um, uh, KSQL DB client, and you can find it there. Um, if not, just find me on Twitter. I will hit you up me in, in Twitter, and um, we will uh, we'll see how we can help you. Uh, all right, I see some good conversation uh, around. Um, I see some good conversation around event uh, streaming and event sourcing and uh, microservice. It's a semantic, guys, uh, folks. Um, so the, the multiple uh, systems can be implemented on top of the um, uh, like the similar concept that can be implemented uh, using different technologies. So that's that's what we do in here. So uh, you can call it um, like um, event store, like Kafka in this case. My events are transactionally stored in Kafka. Is it event store? With Kafka, infinite retention that's available in Confluent Cloud. Yeah, it's like the source of truth, like all the data there. So you can do whatever you want. It's your like event store. Um, do we have any other questions? Um, 
Is there an opinion to produce messages in a topic via uh, uh, Confluent Cloud REST API? I need to check. I think it is, it is available, but I need to check if it's available in production environment. I don't remember exactly because we do have a, like some like pre-production environments where we can test, like our engineers can test and can figure out. Um, you can actually produce messages uh, with, uh, um, with um, say, let me, where is it? With Confluent uh, CLI, you can do, um, uh, say, Kafka topic. You can produce and consume. You say, like, uh, do, let's do, let's do, let's do consume. Um, um, cluster, we have dollar, um, uh, dollar, come on, dollar. Dollar, uh, say, C Cloud Kafka cluster ID, um, and the topic, topic say, let's 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 consume from this topic, for example. Ah, um, sorry, different from this topic. Um, can we do that? Can I do this? Kafka consumer, so in this case, uh, if I run this, yeah, so I can even consume from uh, from uh, Cloud CLI, so that should be good. All right, cool. To do, 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 do. Uh, I didn't show you that. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I, the, what I did the, here, I just used the uh, uh, Cloud Kafka topic consume to consume from this topic, and I just produced some of the new data and data just landed here. So sorry about that. Um, that's um, sometimes it happens, you know, too many, too many things to run uh, one man show and uh, like too many things to remember. Um, yeah, so let's see if there's some other questions. Um, can Um, come on, where is it? Why is it not there? Yep, it's there. Can I use the standalone key SQL DB on prem in production? Yes, you can. Uh, just go there and what the hell? What is going on? Like, why? Yeah, so yes, you can go and um, um, KSQLDB.io, you can grab the image, you can grab the tarball, and you can run this in production without any problems and you know, for free. Um, is KSQL DB configured with a dependent in the EOS by default? That I don't know, but let's uh, let's figure out. Let's um, let's let's try to see if we can do this. Um, so for that, uh, what we can do? So if you want to do this, I don't think it's available through UI, but I do have an um, option to run um, this uh, Docker image for Confluent uh, um, for KSQL DB CLI. So let me switch to my screen and I'll do this. Um, so this is what we will try to do. So it will download the um, CLI. What? Do you want to go to is it Docker? Um, is it Docker? Docker. Uh, Confluent Inc. Um, KSQL DB um, CLI zero dot. Image up to date. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, in V, if I have a key SQL, no, I don't have it. Okay, so I will do source. Um, and after that, I should be able to run this. Enter password. Why it is asking me a password? 
endpoint basic. Uh, okay, so I need to secret endpoint. Okay, so in this case, I will use this guy. And in this case, uh, uh, user and probably I'm doing some of the irresponsible thing to showing some of the keys to you folks right now. But hey, we need to learn uh, things together. So you would uh, learn some, some stuff with me. Okay, uh, show uh, properties. So you said uh, we were talking about, um, what's the um, KSQL DB, um, KSQL DB um, EOS enable. So let's see. Uh, enabling in Kafka streams. Um, I forgot the name of the property of this one. Um, it was exactly, exactly once. Enable. Enable the importance. No, no, no. What's the? Uh, who can uh, help me with this command? Uh, with the uh, property name that needs to be enabled. Um, I forgot the exact. Let's see. Should be inside the streams, and if it's not there, meaning that it's probably not enabled by default. So this is something that I need to check in uh, in our cloud folks. Uh, I was not sure if it's uh, enabled. Maybe it is not because it should be somewhere in uh, in the stream sections. Uh, let's see, producer streams. Um, uh, streams. Physical to be. Enable, enable exactly once. Processing guarantees. So I think I can do this like this. So when I uh, when I do this, so in this case I will be able to do processing exactly once. I guess this is the this is the way how we can do this. And uh, it's maybe not available through UI. I need to check. Maybe I don't know like some of the like UI elements. But you can use this with the um, with the CLI if you're using the CLI tool. That um, that's something that you can do uh, with this. Um, this enable. Yep. I think I hope uh, it was uh, useful. Okay, now, um, yes, my, yeah, like, I know, that's uh, irresponsible. But hey, <laughs> if, you, if you know how to steal my secret for, um, for KSQL DB, you probably learned something today. That's more important. Uh, <laughs> all right, so let's, um, let's see, uh, what time is it? What time is it? Thank you so much for, like, I still have uh, over 100 people just, like, watching this. And uh, that's, that's fantastic. Um, uh, I will show you how we can wrap things up. And this is important, folks. This is important because um, it, the, the, the compute power will cost some money. Um, with the, specifically Kafka for a Kafka cluster. Uh, it is not a big deal because Kafka is a kind of like a uh, pay for what you use, but uh, KSQL DB is a compute uh, thing. It's constantly running, so it will constantly will um, uh, draining some money. So in this case, um, <clears throat> So uh, exactly once it's configured on the client, um, I'd important producer, it's also configured on the client um, and all this kind of stuff. It's, it's a application specific thing. So you don't need to configure bro broker for, for that matter. Um, it, enable ID importance, uh, it's, uh, yeah, thank you. I already, already found this one. And processing guarantee config, that's what I also found that. Thank you so much.
Cool. All right. So let's see. Now, um, this is very important. So we see this. Couple things how we can kill this. So first of all, I will stop my uh, my application. This is my um, <clears throat> processor. That's my uh, generator of my fake data. Next thing is that we need to um, go and clean up the cloud environments. You can see my screen. That's correct. Now you should be able to see my screen. Now, there's nothing happened actually here. So I'm switching back to scripts, uh, scripts and there is a couple scripts that you need to execute. So Docker Compose will kill all this uh, connector and um, Postgres uh, database. So that's, uh, that's what we killed. Next thing is that we need to stop. And there's, um, there is a script that allows you like successfully clean up everything and remove all the keys, um, destroy all environments. And it says uh, the script will destroy entire environment and uh, will destroy everything. Uh, and I'm using incorrect um, the file. Yep, that's correct. Now, it will destroy my KSQL DB cluster, which is all right. Now the um, cluster, Kafka cluster also will go away. If I go in here, this is how I can uh, check if it's uh, correctly uh, destroyed. should go away in a second. Let me refresh UI. And now it's gone. Now it's gone, uh, environment disabled. However, you still will be able to, once the, um, uh, the billing cycle, which is, I guess, day, uh, you will see how much uh, you spent money on a particular environment, so one of the environment that we delete. Again, um, the coupon code and some of the things that um, I shared was enough uh, to run all this workshop to learn some of the things to click around. But I didn't show you one, like most few important elements from this um, from this workshop. I didn't show you some of the um, some of the cloud yet. But but you probably can um, can learn this by subscribing to the channel, obviously, by um, joining me in Twitter. If you go to Twitter, um, do I have a Twitter? Do we have Twitter here in the <laughs> in live stream? So if you go to um, the Twitter, that's my Twitter. Um, uh, I don't know if you, if you will be able to see it on the screen. Um, You can find me here. This is uh, this is my <laughs> this is my Twitter. You can find me here. You can uh, ask your questions. Uh, my DM is open, uh, so like feel free to um, hit me up with some questions. I am every week in this um, <laughs> in this place <laughs> in this studio. I am every week here. I'm doing the live streams. I'm talking about things that you folks would be interested. Um, if you're still here, if you didn't click that like button, please do it right now. Again, we are hitting 200 likes. If we're hitting 200 likes, I will be talking about using Kafka as a, um, how it's called, like event, uh, the task queue, how to use Kafka as a task queue. So um, let's uh, let's take a look if we if we have uh, some some other questions. A uh, few few questions might we have. Uh, what would be advantage of using scheme registry instead of just using JSON surveys? Um, what would be advantages is that you have a centralized schema. You don't need to write a, um, a like a like serializer every time. Um, you have a versioning of the schemas. You can uh, support um, schema evolution and, and, and this kind of stuff. Um, these schemas can be also available in and make the application uh, more like. Um, 
how it's called, the, the like platform independent um, because uh, schemas can, based on the schemas you can generate uh, some of the artifacts that uh, will work for um, from Go for C sharp C plus plus so your your microservices your services can be written in two different uh, different languages using this like schema approach and uh, also it allows you to enforce some of the data governance for example. Uh, Confluence server, which is uh, which is uh, um, like set of plugins on top of Apache Kafka that comes with uh, Confluence platform, supports the server side schema validation that allows um, not to publish messages that will not conform with schema. So that's very powerful. That allows you to protect your data uh, for this. So um, that would be pretty. <laughs> Thank you so much. Like if people are caring about uh, my secret keys, uh, they already gone. Folks, like if you didn't use this opportunity to um, uh, to hack uh, to my uh, uh, Kafka account, they already gone. They already destroyed, and uh, it's they're not there. All right. Quick reminder: subscribe to Confluent YouTube channel, enable notifications. Um, you will see. Uh, when I'm going live next time, it's gonna be Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific time. 12 Eastern time and uh, 5 p.m. Uh, London time. Uh, for those of you, um, it was brings Bruce Spring stream today, um, and my my guitar. Uh, hopefully, you learn something new today. Uh, if you do, please uh, write down in the comments, hit that like button, and uh, uh, praise me in Twitter. This is. Like this is how I <laughs> this is how I make a living. Just like a hit that like button. And as always, have a nice day.